Roadcaster Pro 2, Ecamm Live, and Zoom. How do we get these three all working together? Well, that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, this is a kind of follow on from uh, the previous video I did. I'll leave a link to that in the description, which was all about the basic settings just to get Ecamm and uh, Roadcaster Pro talking nicely to each other. Uh, so this is taking things a little bit of a step further where we're going to integrate it also with Zoom. And I can't tell you how excited I am about this because uh, we've got some great functionality with the Roadcaster Pro 2. Uh, they added in a second USB interface. And in fact, really, they kind of added in two, didn't they? Because if you watch the first video, you'll know that uh, we now have uh, basically three different audio devices that we can sort of address in our system. We We've got Roadcaster Pro 2 Main and Roadcaster Pro 2 Chat. Those are both over the single uh, first USB out from, or in and out, I should say, from the Roadcaster that you're going to plug into your computer. Uh, now, if you watch the first video, you'll know that I'm recommending that in Ecamm Live, uh, we have the uh, Roadcaster Pro 2 Chat set as the uh, microphone output and, oh, sorry, input, and also the speaker output of Ecamm Live. The reason being that the uh, chat has mix minus and the main does not have mix minus. Uh, what is that I hear you say? Uh, well, mix minus basically means that when you're using a device as an output from something, but it's also the input for that thing as well, uh, what you don't want to happen is any audio that's coming out of Ecamm Live coming into the Roadcaster Pro 2 and then back into Ecamm Live because that's what will cause a slapback where you'll hear basically a sort of one single duplication of the audio going back into, the, uh, into Ecamm. And so Mix Minus basically removes the input from the mix that goes back into the output uh, and vice versa, depending on which way you're looking at it. So that's what Mix Minus is. And that's why it's important to use that chat channel uh, with Ecamm Live. Uh, now, what we've got then is we've also got this uh, third channel now, which is on the second cable, uh, and that is the Roadcaster Pro to secondary. This is what we're going to set up use on uh, Zoom. So the way that I've uh, done this is I've actually got a Zoom call going right now with uh, one of my imaginary friends, uh, and here they are. <laughs> and so on this call, uh, this is currently set up uh, as follows. Here are my audio settings. I've got my speaker set as Roadcaster Pro 2 Secondary. I've also got my, uh, not that one, <laughs> I've also got my uh, microphone set as Roadcaster Pro 2 secondary as well. So this is going over that second USB-C cable from the Roadcaster into the computer. Now, what you can also see is um, it is taking the signal out from the Roadcaster and it's going into, the, uh, into Zoom because as you can see, as I'm talking, it's uh, bouncing up and down here to show you that it is receiving signal. So it is receiving me. So what we want to do is we want to uh, just make sure that we've got this set up. Now, one thing that is useful about this particular uh, input or this particular uh, audio device that we can connect to is this one. We have the option of it being either mix minus or not mix minus. Uh, so let's have a look at how we switch that on. Over on the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, um, I've essentially assigned this to this channel. Uh, I've got a video all about how to assign things to different channels. So I'm going to assume that level of knowledge for the moment. Um, but in the Rodecaster Pro 2 uh, playlist, you'll find all of the tutorials about how to set this up. Um, but this is the channel that I have assigned to that Zoom call. Now, what I can show you is uh, I've got some music playing in the background on my imaginary friend's computer. So that's just to give us some sort of audio coming through Zoom, just so that you'll be able to see that there is somebody uh, there and there is audio coming in from there. So if I move this slider up, you can hear that music. So that's basically saying you can hear the audio from the Zoom call, okay? But at the moment, uh, they would also be getting slapped back from that. As soon as I move that up, they would hear that sound going back to them. So I need to turn on the mix minus for this channel. Now, the way that we do that is to access these settings for any of these channels. Uh, we just click on this button here, the one relative to the channel, uh, and it brings up all of the different settings. We can add all of the different processing and effects and things like that that we can add to any microphone. We can actually add this to this channel. So if we wanted to add some sort of uh, effects to sort of clean up the audio coming out of Zoom, uh, we could technically do that in here as well. I'm not going to get into that today. Um, but what we can do down here is you'll notice at the bottom, it might be a bit small for you to read, but trust me, it says there USB 2 mix minus and currently it is off. All I need to do is just tap that uh, and now it's on. So now that mix minus is applied to that second USB cable and to the uh, Roadcaster Pro 2 secondary uh, channel, which is what is uh, the, the Zoom is linked to. So uh, coming out from there for a moment, 
back to the faders. Uh, now I can move this channel up and you can hear the audio uh, and I can move it down and now uh, you don't hear it and neither do I. One of the ways that I would use this setup though is if I was uh, having an interview, for example, in Ecamm Live and I wanted to take that interviewee or interviewees into the Zoom. So for example, you might be doing a workshop, you might have panelists or something like that and have them feeding into there. Um, so you want the audio to from Zoom to not be feeding, like coming back into the uh, production initially, potentially. Um, but then you may want to bring people on to ask questions. You may also want to use this if you have got some sort of back channel going. So maybe for a live stream and then you've got a back channel running in the uh, in the background. You want to be able to hear what's going on, but you don't want it going out into the production, into the live feed. So that is uh, what we're going to look at how to solve next. And it's really quite simple because uh, we've got this mute button here. So if I mute this channel uh, and then push the slider up, uh, you can see how the uh, the music's still coming through you don't hear it and I don't hear it either. Uh, you probably can't see on there too well, but this is just uh, sort of illuminating to tell me that it is uh, muted, but it's also indicated there by the uh, red bottom there at the bottom of the fader. So audio is coming in here, uh, but I'm not hearing it. Crucially though, um, they are also not he hearing themselves back into Zoom as well because we've got that mix minus on. Now, if I did want to hear the audio from here, uh, we've also got these green buttons at the bottom, which are to solo. So you can actually just solo a particular uh, track. And so if I click on this one, then now I'm hearing the audio back from there. However, I'm not hearing myself on this channel. I'm not hearing anything from the Ecamm channel. Uh, it's literally only soloing that channel. So what we want to be able to do is I want to be able to still hear everything. Uh, well, the trick is you just basically solo everything that you want to hear. So if I click on here, then now I'm hearing the music. Uh, I'm hearing the audio from Zoom, that is. Uh, and as I move the slider up and down, it's changing the volume in uh, my ear as well. So I can hear that. Uh, but crucially, you're not hearing the music. Then if somebody's got a salient question and I want to bring them up onto the presentation or maybe I want to bring somebody into the live stream or whatever, uh, then I simply just press the unmute button. I can get the level where I want it first, press the unmute, uh, and now everyone can hear everybody. <laughs> and so that is the way uh, that that works. Now, that then means that we've got total control over the audio from Ecamm Live and from Zoom. Uh, that is going to give you a lot of versatility. There is one extra step which you may want to take, and I've got to say thank you to David Paskin for uh, pointing this one out because it's not something that I had thought of. But what you could also do is you could as well, uh, since we do have uh, one spare track here, uh, which is the, um, if you think about the three different uh, potential ones we've got, we've got the Rodecaster Pro 2 Chat. Uh, in my way, we are now using that for the Ecamm Live. Uh, we've got Rodecaster Pro 2 Secondary. We're then using that for Zoom. Uh, those are both currently set to mix minus, so there's no uh, hearing of each other back on those uh, channels. Uh, but we are not currently using the Rodecaster Pro 2 Main. Uh, bearing in mind that that one cannot be mix minus, it's just sort of fixed. Um, that would be an ideal one to use for your system audio. Uh, so whilst we do have the settings down here for Ecamm set as a uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 Chat, and if we look at the Ecamm settings that I've got over here, uh, I've also got the uh, speaker set to Rodecaster Pro 2 Chat. Um, what we could do is we could also then in our system settings uh, change our audio output to that Rodecaster 2 Pro main. And what that's going to mean is anything that is coming over the system uh, that basically isn't those ones isn't going to get fed back to them. Um, but then that means that uh, we've got then control over the system audio as well on the faders. What you would want to do though is just again in the Ecamm settings uh, where it says broadcast system audio, you just want to make sure that that was turned off. So uh, have that set to never, because then uh, what that would mean is if you were ever doing anything where you were screen sharing or something in Ecamm and you wanted to have the system audio, uh, then you would simply just manually raise the level here and then obviously re turn it down when you weren't using it. Uh, but with that, you've basically then got three channels to give you total control over your system audio, your Ecamm Live audio, and also your Zoom audio as well. And uh, this now, uh, really negates the need for things like loopback and so on. Uh, it's really versatile. It doesn't just apply to Zoom, obviously. Uh, if you're using this with Microsoft Teams, with Discord or anything like that, uh, then it's ideal for this. Now, in fact, 
I'm going to be doing something very similar to this specifically for Discord because I'm going to be starting to do some live streams where I have uh, them feeding into Discord as well and then have people that can ask questions in there uh, and so be, be able to ask direct questions without necessarily coming on to uh, interview mode as such to, to ask them uh, but still can be part of the live stream. So I'll be talking about that in a video which will be coming up next. I'll also leave a list to uh, my Roadcaster Pro playlist as well.